This is a presentation about a contemporary assemblage artist working in the Bay Area, Becca Brayer. I recommend you check out her website. She has quite a unique approach to um, her assemblage, and that's something we've learned, is that every assemblage artist has their own voice, their own approach to things. Becca Brayer tends to make work that... Um, is really object heavy and in fact a lot of her pieces are very heavy in uh, what we might uh, what, what I've told you is called high profile objects in in my approach to this objects that have uh, a lot of narrative a lot of meaning and I think in uh, Becca's approach she loads her pieces with so many objects of, of uh, narrative of, of high profile with lots of associations and meanings that the result is you're left with no specific meaning but a world of meanings and that's the impact of the pieces. Here's what she says on her website about her work. She says, my assemblage is a direct response to the untapped imagery that lives in the recesses of my creative being. I am a dream weaver. My process begins at rest and takes its purest form there. As an assemblage artist, the deliberate exit from outside interference into my own artistic headspace allows me to dance in the abstract and to release the confines of my reality. So that's her opening statement. And then she has some hints as to the things that interest her and kind of focus her attention. As I create, my emphasis is initially on the object and its architecture. The concept is second secondary. I think this is a great insight because she's interested in certain objects and setting them up. It's almost like a, a later assignment you will have called mitate, where it's driven by presenting specific objects, but also architecture. And, and you can see that in her work, the context, the substructure, what is it presented in? And she has lots of wooden boxes, parts of furniture, um, different kinds of, of uh, structures that give uh, bones or surround to her pieces. Imperfection has always stoked my artistic sensibilities. So she's interested um, in uh, things not coming all together, though her work is, seems really highly resolved. I approach each piece of work knowing that just below the surface the image of my artistic narrative waits. And then she has um, a couple more suggestions. Each one of a kind piece embodies a specific destination. So she's giving a sense of place, and it results in a representation that captures a significant moment in time. So those are some things that drive her thoughts and her practice as an assemblage artist. And you'll see here uh, many examples. Dolls, and especially antique dolls, are, are a constant reoccurrence in her work here. Um, you'll see a lot of, just like Joseph Cornell, uh, Betty Saar, uh, you'll see a lot of repeating iconography. So, for instance, those, um, uh, they're not called, the, the, those uh, rulers, those measuring of kind of collapsible rulers are uh, repeating imagery in her work. And we'll see lots of different ones. And dolls are repeated imagery in her work. There's uh, some rulers in the background again, and here you can see uh, some games, some toys, um, an old-fashioned razor, straight razor, um, lots of different objects. And you'll see, again, th there's a, a certain symmetry in a lot of her work. She um, is somewhat unique in that um, focus of symmetry. None of the other artists that we've looked at have such a stri strict adherence to symmetry. This is an interesting uh, series here where... Um, the architecture is a box with something contained inside, some kind of ball made out of different materials, and then a baby's head on top. All of it mounted on some uh, pipe hardware on the bottom there. So you get a sense of um, this. There's another ruler. The baby's heads um, are from dolls, and you can see that the um, the nose on this one has been altered just to add interest and um, kind of do something unexpected. It keeps your interest going. Here's a similar format, um, but now the blocks are uh, treated um, as solids and uh, the heads are wrapped in thread and each has a different kind of crown. Um, 
just really compelling, interesting work. And again, almost every object carries narrative in his in her work. Um, from the crown made it out of matches. That's a pretty profound metaphor. The uh, the mummification or wrapping up of the doll's head, um, things being portable on wheels, and the lovely surfaces of these pieces as well are quite compelling. This is something, so the, th the thread sewing related items uh, come in quite oh. often. You can see, um, here, uh, there's a, um, also this is a spool for thread at the bottom there. So lots of, or, or related to weaving perhaps. Here's some more of those kinds of spools. Um, and these antique figures, I guess that's another thing that um, is so unique about her work is that she has access to a remarkable number of intriguing antique objects. Uh, most of her work has a sense of uh, time, uh, so it's a piece out of time. These pieces uh, seem to have qualities that are um, uh, from yesterday, from older times. Um, you can see how often she's using these uh, as bases, these kind of pillars of these um, thread spindles. And when she gets something like a drawer that's already divided into space, then it becomes a composition uh, exercise of making a kind of a, a progressive experience here. Some simple frame pieces. There's the rulers again. Another piece that's mobile on wheels. Here's the use of rulers once again. Birds often uh, occur along with uh, dice. Um, these are also images that she uh, uses frequently. You can see here's uh, the bird with rulers. So perhaps she shares that interest in birds with Joseph Cornell, but rather than paper cutout, she's actually finding three-dimensional bird images. And um, there's always something off or juxtaposed, like you can see in the right, the bird is in the center, and off to the right, um, on the ground is an abandoned egg, or is just an egg sitting there. And then on the left, uh, once again, the piece is um, a drawer. It's uh, mounted on wheels. But take a look, the bird's egg is hanging from its beak on a thread. And that's, that's something she does quite well, which is put something unsettling or um, unexpected in her pieces. Another image with birds. And here in a stirrup, and you can see another thing that's uh, great about her work is that she has a, just an impeccable sense of composition. Um, she's playing with the objects and, you know, the placement of those eggs is vital and a very effective and she's moving them around. I'm certain that she doesn't just go put them. She, that's part of her process is to manipulate the objects until she finds a place that feels just right to an intuitive sense. This is an old fashioned clamp. Again, this sort of thread mummified uh, doll head. A shuttlecock, this is used in weaving. And look at this wonderful uh, piece. Again, take a look at the use of the rulers. Piece that speaks of jump ropes and here. so. There's some Monopoly houses in there, and um, the rulers again, and a kind of opening shadow box. And again, what makes her work particularly unique, I think, is that she has this use of lots and lots of uh, objects here, the abacus and the bird, um, and this book that the bird is sitting on, all seem to carry a lot of narrative, and, and she's um, bringing lots of narrative to each piece. 
Now, that was uh, the work of uh, Becca Bayer, Breyer, and this is um, a couple of pieces I saw at the same time that um, I was looking at Becca's work. This is the Sausalito Art Fair, and I thought you might enjoy this kind of abundance approach to assemblage, where the objects are used um, much the way you might use clay um, to build up a solid form and space. So the, the objects are just piled one upon, upon each other to build out this image of the swan. You can see a little close-up of, of some of the objects. And that will be uh, this presentation on a unique assemblage artist. It'll be interesting to see what emerges from your approach to assemblage. <laughs>